Hello and welcome to Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever. This is a ladder match, not a tournament game. The map is Badlands V4, and we've got two very good players. We got Tyrant Style, better known as Blast Chilled. He's had a few names. I think he's probably best known as Blast. And we have Zlow here, best known as. Zlow, of course, everyone knows who he is. Zlow has Aeon. I don't know if he chose Aeon. Probably went random or semi-random on his ladder search. Terran style blast shield, I think, probably goes random as well or semi-random. I think if you see someone not uh, not playing Cybern, they probably have some semi-random uh, search at least. In my experience. Right, let's see. A uh, couple plugs. We have a nice new video for Medicraze. Uh, it's, it's the same game. It's the uh, Blood Deer versus UD game on Loki. It's a game he covered in his video. Check that out. Uh, the Dogfather, Z E Z. Dogfather. Is a promotion in charge of promotion of Faf needs more promotion for himself. He he makes some shit casts they're called on on YouTube, which are basically low rated casting low rated players. Uh, check those out, and we also have a brand new caster called Nartek, who started making videos. He's making them very regularly, uh, so go check out Nartek's videos. And uh, yes, support new casters, all the casters in the community. If you are Russian speaking, then, well, of course, you should be watching Zlo. But you should also be watching Robogear. His videos look very, very nice. He has nice editing, good uh, graphics, seems to be explaining what's going on very clearly with the help of some nice graphics. And unfortunately, I don't know what he's saying, but I know that he knows what he's talking about. So I have no doubt that it is very good information. So yeah, if you're a Russian speaking player, then check out Robogear and Zlow. Also, tournament wise, you should sign up for WWPC, Worldwide People's Championship. No matter what your rating, there is a bracket for you. There are opponents for you to play. And the tournament is not on a set date. It happens over a period of a week or two. And you organize your matches with your opponent. Whatever suits the two of you. <laughs> that was a strange excursion for the tank. And he also kind of baited the ACU of Zlow. So he's looking for an engineer that might be uh, reclaiming rocks here. But there was no such engineer at the front on like here so we have a lab actually this lab has actually nailed a kill here dancing around a tank using the scout effectively there is low and he's also managed to squeeze past this tank and is now being chased if this lab keeps running the tank will take a very long time to catch it this this is actually really annoying you can take out one of the early tanks of your opponent from the game basically if you get a lab past your opponent attacks the lab the lab keeps running the tank will never catch it and basically the tank is just wasted the one of the early tanks first few tanks can just be completely removed from the game by that lab unfortunately Zlo didn't keep the lab moving he did keep this one moving and so that will be have to be followed by this tank so yes let's see what's going on we have a nice way of building here for Zlo. No adjacency, except slight power adjacency here. But all these engineers have no walking to do to build all these factories so you can get them down a lot quicker. Walking time is a big waste of time. 
and early on in the game that's very important you need to minimize the amount of walking around your engineers do especially because they're pretty slow units you know looks like this tank is making beeline for an engineer that is not defended by any tanks and will not be defended by any tanks in the near future this guy needs to hide which direction should he run perhaps uh, doesn't matter anymore he's too late they also have a tank in the back that looks like it's killed an engineer maybe or is that a dead tank that looks like a dead tank actually but uh, two engineers going down on the left side for his low that is quite painful this guy has managed to sneak in this is the lab that ran from the right got a kill over here on this engineer let's come all the way around into the back of the base where it gets caught and so blast looks to have done well he's gotten more engineer kills but uh, but his expansion is slower by the looks of it even with that because he's low in the furthest expansion slightly before blast is oh aurora gonna quickly take out the striker Radar would be nice to kill in this scenario after he kills the tank, of course. This tank with three kills, that's very nice. 110 mass killed. Standing in the in this corner here. Because engineers are likely to come here. But it's obviously spotted quite easily by Zlow and will be taken out for free. Well for free after all the kills it got. <laughs> Not that free, I guess. T2 land already done for Blast. He's gone fast to T2. Because he's against uh, Aurora. Doesn't want to fight Aurora for too long. Or for very long at all. And so rushes to T2. Very quickly, I would say. What units is he going to make? He first makes a T2 engineer. To get his T2 power started very quickly. That's going to be a nice advantage for him once he gets that up uh, actually he's low also T2 land now not far behind blast perhaps expecting fast T2 because of the matchup being AM versus UEF I think we'll see mongoose from blast shield they will easily deal with any Aurora of course some units have been spotted this low sends some back, doesn't want to lose all of them. He knows he's under threat from the ACU and some other tanks. And maybe he can move around and go past here. But he has actually no landscapes. So no landscapes in this army means the Aurora are pretty terrible. The only other radar is way back here. That's not going to cover this area. Yeah. So air scout is really the only thing he can use to actually use the range of his aurora bit of a push here oh there's a lot of kills to get here this is nice you see all these engineers reclaiming rocks can be killed quite quickly by slow this is a problem with uh, this fast t2 he really is extremely low on units blast shield and he's also making one t2 max he's halfway to his first t2 max meanwhile slow has two t2 maxes now and he's upgrading two more as we speak. Almost halfway in his P gen. Blast is ahead on the T2 P gen anyway. Also, Blast making a very defensive T2 PDs here on the right. That seems extremely early to uh, engage in something like that. Also, make a T2 PD here. Whoa. I, uh, I don't like that at all. This is worse actually because he has multiple queued up. But uh, if you want to make T2PDs on this map, and T2PDs are very, very good. Oh, waste for Mongoose. Is he going to waste the second one? I hope not. Not a fan of Blast Micro so far. Or this uh, PD decision. If you want to make... Yeah, that's where you want to make them. Now, it is great to have Sparkies to do this. But yeah, you want to make them along here. Spread them out, you know. Here, 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 then you're going to be looking pretty good. 
But uh, back here, this is no good. I don't like it at all. He's also making TMD very quickly. Oh, he actually is making T2 Mexus here, so... That's fair enough, but, you know, T2... You know, TMD is pretty expensive, so, so far... Wow, there's so few units out for his low... He really has invested heavily in economy. T2 P gen, 4 T2 Mex is up. So now he'll be switching into quite a bit of T2 land production. But uh, you can see it's taking a while, that switch. In about 3 minutes he'll have a really nice number of units. If he turns on all of his support factories. He has so much mass now on the bike. That uh, it's time to get going producing units. These Aurora are fantastic though. This guy has four kills and two veterancy. Last lacking radar in the back of his base. This radar is new addition. If you put a radar here you see the back pretty pretty well. Uh oh. What the fuck? The obsidian just missed a standing target. And it missed again. Obsidian also survived though, the fire of five mongoose for quite a while. And then it'll it's gonna retreat, regen its shield and get 1500 HP back. Not a bad unit, but uh, maybe not the unit of choice versus mongoose. Wanna see some asylums mixed in, maybe? We have two pigeons already. Actually, Zlow is just going T3 land. This game is very, very low on on units, really. Both these players playing a longer game, but honestly, who does that favor in a UEF versus Aeon game? Right off the bat, I would be tempted to say the UEF player. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's bad. Running into the P PD range. Some wasted units. But yeah, you can see very. very low. low unit count game so far. But Zlow has the better of it. He is. Well, TMDs are a problem. He's just lost a, a mech to TML, but uh, he has a much nicer eco than Zlow. Er, than Zlow. Than Blast. So this low unit style is working better for, for Zlow for sure. He's ahead, so this works fine for him. Blast Shield needs to make something happen with these units, or he needs to really catch up on economy start he's adding more T1 land factories for Lobos it seems needs to get to work on these mexes start assisting them to T2 doesn't look like he can really make progress actually with his units low now setting up T2PDs in the middle and on the left side not on the right, but he does have... Ooh, double gun. And he's actually making the shield right now, I think. Unless it's chrono, it's probably shield. Seems to be going quite slowly. Then he's not assisting, so... Yeah, very... Slow-paced game so far on Badlands. Not, not too unusual on Badlands. One thing I have to notice though is, bring notice to, is the plateaus. Zlo has both. And really, Blastchill has a lot of time right now. You see how casual this game is right now. I mean, it's not, not casual, but, you know, there's not much that you have to do. They have base management. But he has a lot of time to work on these plateaus. He could get a drop off. Make some air. 
make some T2 air perhaps, take the plateaus back, do something to get them back because this is very annoying if your opponent has both the plateaus. It can get very annoying. Later on in the game, Zlo's reach T3 land. He is making support factories. Three quarters of the way, yeah, this is going to be his mass disappearing now into T3 units pretty quickly. Although he's not making any out of this <laughs> factory. Now he's turned it on. Power is a problem though. He's going to struggle through the uh, the stall to get this T3 PJ. And I probably could turn off some stuff like... He has turned off his obsidian shields. He could turn off static shields as well. That would help even more. And even his... ACU shield could be turned off. You can actually make uh, a hotkey which is toggle all unit abilities and that will turn off shields. That's quite a nice hotkey. That's uh, toggle all unit abilities. And that can help you with quick shield power management or whatever. So T3 land is here. We have three Percy's out for blast. He has quite a few T2 mechs now. Not full T2 mechs. These are surely next to go up and we are going to wait for something to happen. So Zul going for Harbs. Uh, I'm not sure why he's not making sniper bots. Harbs versus Percy's is not going to be good. Snipers versus Percy's that is the good shit. Whether you're Aeon or Seraphim snipers what you want. Also we have some power shields mixed in so we need the beautiful Absolver. Don't ever forget about it. I know I forget about it in games sometimes. But this anti-shield unit extremely powerful unit especially versus things like a shield commander we don't have one here and it doesn't look like we will have one but uh, against a shield commander against power shields against other Aeon players especially devastating against other Aeon players because they have so many shielded units and those mobile shields and blast shield pointed out as low as nice T2 radar spot here it is. <laughs> On top of the cliff where it can't be shot by land units basically. But could get bombed. Single T1 bomber can get through there. Looks like we have a fight in the middle. The obsidians rush into range. As they should do. They have so much damage. That once they get into range they're really devastating. And the harbs are sitting back a bit further. He's trying to dodge around with them. Dodge as many shots as he can. PDs go down. Those were a big help in in this battle here. And now, now that they're gone, it's quite a tricky one. Obsidian's being used. And they're doing pretty well. Doing a decent job when they manage to get into range. <laughs> but even if they don't get into range, they're a nice meat shield. At the very least. F looks like full T2 mechs from Zlo. Where's the T3 mechs coming? Finally have some warfare at the T3 stage. <laughs> and there's now a decent amount of mass left here. There's quite a bit of overkill and stuff. So we have almost 6,000 mass in the middle. That'll pay for a T3 mechs. Perhaps somebody's first T3 mechs soon. Blast still behind on economy and 30,000 mass behind on in total mass. That's not great. And these T2PDs didn't really see much use to that. We have T3 artillery out. Very important unit at this stage of the game. 
They can do a lot of damage from range. You just need to keep them alive. Zlow does not have any T2 bombers, you see, to snipe these, which is not ideal for him. But, you know, maybe gunships or something could be used. T1 bombers, certainly. So a lot of these don't seem to be under shields. Sniping those would be quite helpful for him. Static shields going up. One of them actually just goes down. I think I've... And they're moving forward now. The UEF. But they're getting too close actually. Percy's ran into range of the Harbs there. Oh, they are going to kill this army though. Not the best micro from Blast. He moves back out of range now. Just an attack move would really... Yeah, all of these units should have died, honestly. Blast didn't make the most of that. He's making a lot of static defenses now. <laughs> we see how he wants to play this game. I mean, I guess we saw from minute one when he started making PDs right outside his base. <laughs> but uh, that continues. Low has a T3 mechs now. And actually, he almost has a GC already. We also have, on this side, we have a couple of harbs dropped. But, again, static defenses. I've already claimed the lives of two obsidians, apparently. And now, a Percy. And these PDs will kill those harbs. Nice mass donation there. For Blast. Blast has T3 air as well. We have ASFs out. T3 air. There is no T3 air for Zlow. He's put uh, so much mass now into this GC and I don't think Blast Shield is going to be ready for GC at this point. This is quite quite quick for a GC but I guess in a, in a time like this, in a game like this, which has moved at a slow pace in terms of combat, the economy moves at a much faster pace and He's had all the time in the world to to prepare to make that GC. T3 gunship will put an end to this massacre. One, two, three, four, five, six T2 mechs have died. Seven. This one killed by artillery and I did mention the plateaus. If we look at them now we have two artillery up here. They've been dropped here. We don't have a support factory on the cliff. And over here, more artillery. Static shields to protect them. Mobile shields to protect them. And that's going to be quite annoying to deal with. These gunships are... I don't know where they're going. Oh, there's really not much air at all for Zlow. He has swift winds. Those aren't much use to him versus ASF. And we have... Ravagers going up in the middle, static shields, all the Percy's are assembling to defend against this GC and T3 gunships also being sent in, the flak are trying to take out the gunships but there's just not that much flak. GC stands at its range and beams down these Percy's. Where's the tractor beam? Oh, Zlow standing in the open, and there's actually five T3 gunships heading for his ACU. Now, he does have the heavy shield, 25,000 extra HP on this ACU. But without any air, I don't see any anti-air around. He could be a big trouble. The GC is now retreating. Zlow is thinking about his ACU. Doesn't have time to be microing the GC against 25, 20 Percy's. A mobile shield arrives at a good time giving that ACU another three and a half thousand HP or even more and his shield is still not down and he gets under a static shield another 11k to get through and we actually have two Sams here I had completely missed these were these built the entire time oh meanwhile in the middle GC is getting surrounded by Percival's and the T3 gunships have returned to add their way to the fight and that is that is so much mass for Blast Shield to grab 
He still has a very large number of Percy's in the middle. There is a, another GC, it's halfway to completion. Uh, these Sams are getting so much damage. These T3 gunships maybe could have been used here. Mm. A few Janus on this line of anti air would be good too. Percy's continue moving forward and they're absolutely melting the Harbs. The Harbs have no mobile shields with them. I really think you absolutely need those mobile shields with them. Because it gives them a lot more HP and they're fast and they have a lot of damage. They just need, a, you know, a bit of help with those mobile shields to give them more HP. Makes them a lot better. Zlo is playing very dangerously here. Has Still has 9k on his shield. But he's gonna fight these Percivals. He does have the double gun. What's his overcharge looking like? He has a lot of... A lot of damage. Basically unlimited overcharges here with 49,000 power storage. Barely even uses most of it to get the kills and the Percy's are disappearing. Zlo still has his shield up with about 2,000 left on it. And the push has been repelled. This expansion of Blast Shield is in such a bad way thanks to these just these couple of artillery and also the the drop these mexes have never been upgraded again since they were killed they have an artillery war here t3 mobile t2 static and both these guys are building those units <laughs> fighting each other some air some gunships sent here would be perfect. There's very little anti-air here. T3 gunships should be... Should clean up this island. That would be... Or uh, plateau. That would be very nice for Blast. He needs to keep his army in the middle to secure the reclaim. This is really unfortunate that he ended up donating back so much mass towards Zlo. Because Zlo does have a very nice economy. Well, actually, he only has three T3 mechs. I was thinking he would have more by now, but he's, he's very focused on getting another GC up. Doesn't want to stall and slow that down at all. But uh, Blast Shield, of course, missing this side in terms of upgraded mechs. They're all T1 there. Means that he is in a big deficit in terms of mass. Only one T3 mechs for him. So after... A slow game with a lot of ecoing. The ecoing is really slowed down now. I gotta say, the T3 Mexes are not coming thick and fast. Only one gunship sent to this expansion. That's the wrong way to approach that. Need to build up three or four of them, and then they'll quickly deal with any anti-air, and the rest will disappear pretty quick. But this RD war is going to continue for a while. Ooh, looks like Blast is getting the worst of it here. It's making Ravagers. So there's a static artillery. Only one, though. He doesn't want to invest in more, it seems. I don't know if these MMLs can actually... hit stuff up here. Let's see. Oh, wow, they can. Well, it looks like they can, anyway. Yeah, yeah, they are hitting the shields, and they have huge damage, so perhaps that would be enough to drop the shields. Blast Shield has finished. Yeah, fat Boy. Fat Boys are such a good unit. Such a good unit. It's uh, not a great matchup for Aeon at this point stage of the game the options they have versus a UEF player well you can't really go for snipers because well a fat boy absolutely murders snipers obviously thanks to its range and damage snipers are just not really an option so as an Aeon player up against you know, Percy's and a fatty well uh, it's quite difficult you obviously have to make GC's but I think you gotta look to other options 
to swing the game your way. Like air, for example. But it doesn't look like Zlo is interested in using air. Artillery. Well, a lot of teacher artillery might be an option. It's certainly going to be needed against a fat boy, most likely, to keep it at bay. Otherwise, Blastul will abuse its range to kill a lot of T3 units and stay at arm's length versus the GC. There's so much fire coming from from Blastfield up to this artillery position but it's still alive. Shields are just not dropping. I feel like a strap bomber or two would drop the shields immediately and that would be it. Oh, speak of shields dropping, two of them have just died. This mobile shield has popped back on at a nice time. T1 bomber sent in. Oh, <laughs> they're gonna do very nicely. You can see a lot of stuff hitting the plateau though. It's not too easy to actually hit this stuff up here. This is dead once again. What's going on? These two artillery we dropped up here have been amazing. Fatboy moves forward quite far and looks like Blast has taken a lot of mass here. Is he making more T3 mexes? He's making another Fatboy now. He is trying to make more T3 mexes. And we're at a bit of a standoff. So we wait for the next inevitable battle. Zlow Zlo is far behind on reclaim, unsurprisingly, but uh, he does have one GC and another one just about to finish. Blast is quite a distance from his second fat boy. And Zlow has all of his mechs is teched and he has both plateaus so map control far superior for his low he also has more t3 mechs if i'm not wrong let's see we have one two three four five i think we have five for blast five for his low as well but again more t2 mechs Blast is not really taking care of this. He needs to... Uh, if he gets some sparkies over here, he can quickly get up shields. And then he might be okay. Maybe he can start another arty war. You can see he's cleared this completely. This would be the perfect time now. Just just a drop a Percy. Drop two Percy's. Take this plateau back. This is the time now. Because he has cleared all of the tech units. There's nothing left here except a shield, some T1 engineers, and a T2 support factory. So this is moment to take it back. The, the GC for Zlow is moving to the right. I don't know where the second GC has gone. Oh, one on the left and one on the right. And now this fat boy, you can see, is shooting into the cliffs here on Badlands. It can't attack on both sides here. But Zlow can, and he's being very <laughs> aggressive with his uh, with his GC on the right especially trying to split the army of blast shield and it looks like Zlo wants to push now he has Harbs moving forward he has a couple of T3 artillery but not much and those Ravagers will kill the Harbs pretty easily I think also Ravagers on the left are attacking the Harbs and will attack the GC after that. Fatboy moves to the left and the Percy's move to the right. What will cover the center other than these two Ravagers? Three Ravagers now attacking the GC and the GC attacking back. The Harbs on the left are taken out and on the right Looks like we have Harbs and Artillery running past and heading into the back of the base where there are T2 Mexes 
and a T3 Max. The, the GC on the right though has been caught. Zlo punished for splitting his army up and all of these Percy's really did amazing especially thanks to the power shields look at how many power shields are mixed in here tanking a lot of damage especially from beam weapons uh, shields are very good <clears throat> because beams don't have too much AoE generally this other GC as well on the left is very low and it's fat boy, two fat boys full HP haven't been touched by by Zlo's army whatsoever and this is gigantic mass donation now GC here GC here many dead T3 units a lot of dead Percy's that died to uh, to take out those uh, GC's but uh, yeah, the Harbs are getting mauled now by the by the Fat Boy. It's not even close to getting into doing damage, and still many Percy's left over and many two Fatties. Third one has been started. Construction begins. Blast Shield right now is lacking mass big time but that won't last he needs to quickly get reclaiming and he should be in an amazing position finally a fat boy turns to the right and gets rid of these annoying artillery maybe he can take his mexes back but this was awful from slow and you see the pain of a of an Aeon player playing versus a UAF player at this stage attacking with GC's and Harbs versus Percival's and Fat Boys is very difficult and this ambitious double attack attacking on both sides really did completely fail for as low Blast Shield moving forward with his Percy's in the center. Zlo is very close to this army and there are so many Percy's. But Zlo very bravely is going to shave off one Percy with an overcharge. And Blast Shield runs away. Now is it time for Blast Shield to just counterattack? We have two 45 Percy's and two fat boys third one on the way over halfway versus uh, second GC is about to be complete so we do have a GC only 23 harbs though versus 45 Percy's so maybe it is time for a counter attack Zlow sending most of his army on the right side now most of his harbs and his one of his two GCs. Zlow started taking some fire from the fatties. He's gonna back up and so are his units. Zlow is making many T2 artillery on the right side so that's where he's feeling like he has the most safety. Actually on the cliff we have four TML launchers or TMLs I should say but uh, have they been spotted? Well, they're just radar blips at the minute, and the GC is attacking from Zlow. And it looks like the fatties can't hit it. You can see Zlow's position it right next to this cliff, so the fat boys are so far away. They would have to come all the way down to here to actually get any shots away on this GC. However, all the Percy's are shooting into the cliff as well. Look at this. GC is playing hide and seek with the with the UEF army and getting a lot of kills and not taking much damage at all. Look at that 24,000 mass kill. He's about to get his second veterancy. Finally, the Percy's come around the corner and get some shots off. But this has been very, very good for Zlo so far. Now the Fat Boys are coming. Whoa, two. Two Percy's just got tractor beam there. 
and the per and the GC hits its second vet. 39 kills, basically all of them are Percival kills. Another tractor beam claims a Percy. There's still so many Percy's around. This this thing is murdering so many and yet there's just more and more of them and a third fat boy comes out and that will be the end of the GC. This GC is not getting away. However, while it's here, it's getting amazing damage done. And also, engineers and even a harp behind this are sucking this GC wreck as fast as they can. They've got half of it so far, almost half. And this GC needs to run away now so it doesn't leave more mass. You can see the left side, an entire army of engineers has completely cleaned the board more than half this GC wreck taken which is very very impressive and completely needed for for his low he can't afford to give all of the mass away there's a lot of artillery here but without T2 shields they will die very quickly now Aeon artillery is actually quite expensive the T2 artillery is more expensive than other factions I don't know if it's the most expensive it might be but you really gotta make some T2 shields to, to uh, help them out and then they will very easily deal with the fat boy this fat boy is actually getting quite low you can see the the green clouds of Aeon bullshit are doing a lot of damage and there's still so many of these artillery. I think this fat boy is going to die. Oh, there it goes. He didn't even need the teacher shields in the end. And now with a dead fat boy, there's still two GCs here on the right. Zlo wants to save this. It has some veterancy. Three vets, in fact. A lot of veterancy. So if he can retreat it, he can potentially let it stand around and... Uh, let the regen do its work it does get plus 85 health per second in the middle both fat boys with their shields down and that is because the tmls have flown and killed one two three four five t3 p gens a support factory looks like it's killed hives as well or maybe they died from the p gen explosion a lot of tmd going up and if we look at the damage uh, that is a lot of damage, but killing all that power means. Well, we can see what it means. No fat boy shield, which is awful for for blast shield. All his production be slowed almost by half. His mobile shields are down. His static shields. He is struggling for power, big time, and he also has to make these TMD. He has no TMD here, however. So still all of this stuff here is vulnerable. More TMLs are flying. Wait, those aren't TMLs, are they? Oh, they are. And, oh, he's taken out the T3 Land HQ. That is an excellent kill to be able to get. Look at the damage these things have now. <clears throat> and that is awful for, for Blast Shield. Things were going well for him. And those TMLs have done just absurd damage. Now he has a P gen up, he's getting another one. He needs a new HQ and he's upgrading to T2 land right now. He also needs this this fat boy because his T3 land production is gonna be very much slowed down. But still, he's the one taking all the damage, and Zlo is basically, he's attacking. Some of it, his attacks have failed spectacularly, but uh, then the next attack with just some TMLs has done incredible work. And meanwhile, his base is basically untouched. He's also not making any T3 mexes. 
He's he's not made any T3 Rexes in a long time. We also don't have any T3 air. He's just making swift wins. 95 swift wins. That's it's appalling. <laughs> swift wins are really terrible versus ASF. They're actually maybe worse than interceptors against ASF in my opinion. So they die in two shots. You see. And that's that's really terrible. And they're about four times as expensive as an Inti, which dies in one shot. So that's bad maths for the Swifty. A random GC on the left here, just completely all alone, but there are no units on this side for for blast and also there's no omni, omni sensor I expect it died in the explosion of some of these pgens and he really needs to replace that now because a GC has literally just snuck up on this expansion and is going to wipe it out I mean with one artillery two PDs oh no he's even gonna kill a pgen a T3 support factory and that is really bad for Blast. The lack of intel is terrible. There goes the T3 Max as well. And he needs to protect this expansion. We have so many T3 Maxes here for Blast on the left side. And a Harb has actually gone in behind and killed many, many Maxes as well. Now, Blast does have a very nice army, honestly, with three fat boys but this damage is 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 brutal and now Zlo has 373 mass income versus under 300 for blast he still has a dead mex in his base god the damage is for veterancy on this serpentine tml And this, this GC should probably run away now. He can just go home. Look at that. There's not. It's just. He just raided an expansion with a GC. What the hell? <laughs> oh, it's, it's so crazy. And why is then? Why is this GC here? Just hiding in the corner. It's like using them like T1 or T2 units. Crazy stuff. So, Zlo has four GCs. This is the one from earlier that he saved. It was on about 20,000. It's at 35,000 now. Another GC on the way, halfway. Still no T3 iron. But many Sams. Let's see. And this looks terrible for Blast Chill now. Oh, Zlo saved this guy. Man, you had all the time in the world to bring this back. Don't waste it now. You can sort of, you can dodge Fat Boy Fire pretty well, but it's obviously going to take you longer to get away then. Hmm. Well, what now? Ball's really in Blast Court. He, he's just behind. His fat boys are nice, but uh, he can't use them on this side, really. Thanks to all these artillery. Look at th this artillery has 6,200 damage. And these ones have 7,000. 7,500. So, these artillery will keep, keep the fat boys at bay on the right. Could he attack on the left? Could he attack anywhere? Last Chills has been playing defense for this entire game and it's gained him a lot of reclaim. But Zlo has managed to do enough damage. He's We need more TMD. We still need TMD in this base actually. I, there's only TMD here. So potentially could lose all of these support factories. Could lose more mexes in the base. There's now T2 artillery on the cliff here this expansion is gone forever and this one with a lot of reclaim in it also looks to be gone forever because oh holy shit a ton more tml's on the left side even more 
Then on the right. And once Slow fires them. We could see six T3 Maxes disappear. Seven. Seven T3 Maxes maybe? Which would completely end the game. That would be almost all of Blast Chill's economy. Almost all of his economies in range of these TMLs, and there's one TMD defending them. I think we can see where this is going. There goes T2 Max. And the Reclaim as well. And it looks like TMLs are going to win this game <laughs> for his low. Not his 5 GCs. His 5 GCs, in fact weren't that weren't really that important even he just has five GCs and he's just going to sit and wait there is a nuke defense for blast chills so a nuke launcher is not going to work without some snipe t3 air finally from slow and he is also making more t3 maxes as well finally oh my god there go those T3 Mexes. There go Blast Chill's chance to win this game, honestly. And it, he's killing the reclaim as well. Wow, that's a lot of missiles flying. Ouch. The TMD is just not good enough. And not far enough ahead. Oh! A fat boy has just gone down. It's so far away. It, does they really have that much range? On this... What? How did he... How did he kill this here? Did he really kill it with... Did he kill it with this TML? Did he actually snipe it? It was retreating. And I think Zlow had to have killed that with a TML. And Blast Chill gave a quick... WTF. And that was an amazing shot from Zlow. Somehow Swiftwinds have gotten in to the back and are trying to kill gunships. They'll do some damage to one of them. But, uh, yeah, not that useful. Harb's gonna do a run by. I think this game is close to the end now. Oh, a nuke launcher from. from Blast chilled, but uh, there's no SMD here. There is no SMD. This low has scouted the nuke. Really has perfect vision over his opponent's base, and all Zlo has to do here, I think, is. I mean, there are a lot of T3 units to get past. But I think Zlo has to attack and not let this nuke go off. He's making more GCs, that's the plan. Get, dump his mass into GCs and maybe end the game before the nuke is ready. It is a potential way back in for, for Blast, but it's obviously a long shot. Mm, yeah, shield, shield on your T3 Max is always good. See, you have a nice T2 UEF shield that uh, perfectly covers these expansions. It is worth making that in the late stage. You want to shield your T3 Maxes. Definitely a big help versus TMLs. Zlo says he wants to make obsidians instead of harbs. <laughs> I think I can see the argument. Uh, did those just get killed or did Blast Chill kill them? I'm not sure. Well, here comes the, the final battle. A lot of T3 gunships. There's so many of them. Where's the ACU for Zlow? And where are the SAMs? There's no SAMs next to his ACU. That's... There's so many gunships that there's actually potential there. 
Holy shit. 137 swift winds. That doesn't seem right. Six GCs now moving towards the base, taking heavy fire from from the fat boys. Oh, this GC is taking huge damage from but the the swift winds are here, slowing down the game with their insane amount of fire and the gunships got melted There's still some alive the Swifties getting in behind the ASF taking out so many of them and the Swifties actually win the GC has just rushed in and died two GC's in fact we're down to four four GC's a fifth one our third one looks to be just about to get murdered by Look at this number of Percy surrounding this guy. But in the middle we have 41 Harbs and 2 GCs and that might be too much to stop. For Blast, how far is his nuke? It's halfway. Zlo is heavily assisting this SMD so it probably would finish in time anyway. The GCs have entered the range of the fat boys. One goes down, the second one is going to go down right now the Percy's are here to try and do something but there's just so many harbs and still two GC's means that this is not happening the nuke launcher is now under fire from the GC the shields are down the nuke is down and this ACU is getting some some kills on the harbs but he's not gonna last long can't believe you've won this says blast chill Terrid style. After donating a shit ton of mass. And there's not much of a base left here as his ACU is blasted away. Slow had more eco, I think. Shouldn't matter since you donated 200k. Well, yeah, you can see here, Blastchild had 120k more reclaim than his opponent. Would matter if you attacked, I guess. <laughs> oh. Brutal from slow. Well, I think we, we know what won the game here. Uh, in my opinion, it's the TMLs. I mean, the damage done by the... This one here, the first... TML battery on the right did so much damage killed so many T3 P gens and the T3 land HQ which just cost Terran so much time so much time was wasted there by those TMLs and also just in general having the plateaus well for one two T3 artillery mobile artillery denied this expansion forever followed by well, afterwards, there was a lot of artillery built up here to go against the Fat Boys, but the initial two artillery denied this whole expansion for essentially the whole game. On the left side, Blast had to win an Arty War, and then after he won it, he didn't get the Plateau back, so then he lost, <laughs> lost the artillery war after that. Lost this expansion for good. And the TMLs on this side killed every, almost all of his economy on the left side of the map. So the plateaus came to the rescue of Zlo, won him the game in the end, honestly. And uh, we almost hit an hour. So there we go. Thanks for watching. Check out the links and uh, I'll see you next time for another cast. Bye, guys.